Hey class, it's Ashley and I'm back and with another mentor moment. And today I'm hosting a Ask Me Anything. Um, I don't know that I've ever actually done one of these on live. I've done them in my stories before, but never on live. And I'm so excited to answer all of your questions. So you are welcome to ask me anything. You can ask me anything about career development. You can ask me anything about my personal life. You can ask me anything about anything, honestly. I'm happy to share um, answers, my insight, my perspective on things. I really just want to be supportive to you um, and really help you advance in life and work and career with any knowledge or expertise that I have. So if you are watching live, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section. You can also use a little question bubble at the bottom of your screen and you can ask me anything. Um, you can feel free, like I said, to just pop your questions into the chat. You also can just use the little question bubble at the bottom. Ask me anything. Ask me anything about career. You can ask me questions about your boss. You can ask me questions about, um, you know, things that are coming up for you in your industry. Um, if you have sort of questions you want to ask me about my personal life or, you know, things that you always wanted to learn from me or where I buy my weave from, like wherever you, <laughs> whatever you want to ask I'm hosting a ask me anything today so drop your questions for me in the comment section you can also use a little question bubble at the bottom to ask me anything I am an open book I'm a very transparent and honest person and I love to provide um, just space for uh, me to connect with women for them to ask me things about my life about my work um, about my expertise and career development so ask away. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to give you insight. I'm here to give you my perspective. Um, you know, I often tell my mentees that I don't do anything that I'm not good at. So I'm only going to give you answers to things where I have that I have an expertise in or to answer questions like personally about me. If I don't know, I'll tell you that. But you can ask, right? You can ask me anything, right? This is a great opportunity for you to get some insight um, into me, into your career, into things that you might need support with. And the questions don't have to be just about career. You can literally ask me anything. And if I know the answer, I'll tell you the answer. If I don't know, I'll tell you that too. Uh, so one of my mentees is on the line. My mentee, Fope. Hey, Fope, good to see you. She said, ooh, what an opportunity. Yes, this is exciting because I don't think I've ever done an ask me anything before. I've done it like in my stories before, but I've never done it live. So I thought that this would be a really fun opportunity to like um, just answer you all's questions. So if you know somebody who like, um, you know, has career questions, you want to tag them, uh, invite them to join the live, feel free to do that. Um, if you know someone who maybe has career questions and has been dying to get some insight, um, and then I'll just answer your questions and we'll, you know, we'll just connect on live today. So hugs and hustle said, where do you get guidance on about corporate contracts? Um, so is your question about like, how do you secure corporate contracts? Like as an independent contractor, or is your question about like, like if are you a business owner or something you're trying to get like contracts with corporations to sell your product let me know like give me some more insight hugs and hustle on what your question is so hugs and hustle you said yes securing corporate contracts as a business owner selling a program oh okay yes um yeah so i actually have a coach for this um i have i work with a coach um who supports women um in helping them secure contracts with corporations for the things that they do in business. Her name is Liz Simpson. Um, you can probably find her on LinkedIn or if you search her name on Instagram, L-I-Z Simpson. Um, she helps women who own businesses secure corporate contracts. She's the contact that I would recommend you connect with for that. Um, let me know if that was helpful. Um, yeah, and yeah, thank you. It's a very exciting time in my life. Um, I'm getting married in like 50 days. Uh, it's wild. It's crazy. I'll be somebody's wife. It's like, whoa, mind blown. Um, so yeah, the, it's been exciting. Wedding planning has been super exciting. Um, happy to answer questions about if you have them. Um, so again, I'm hosting an Ask Me Anything. If you just joined, feel free to drop any question you have. Ask me anything. I'm going to answer your questions. Fope said, how do you juggle a full-time high-level administrative job and a very time-intensive business? You low-key scare me. <laughs> funny thanks for answering asking this question um this is definitely a question i get a lot when people learn that in addition to running my business full-time i also work full-time in industry people are like wait what's this um how do you do how do you do it all right this is the common question i get so 
To answer your question very succinctly, I do not do it all. And I do not juggle, right? I do not juggle like, oh, I got to do this stuff for my job. Oh, I got to do this stuff for my business. I got to do this stuff for my mentees. I got to do this stuff for my staff. I do not juggle. I'm not a juggler. I or I outsource a lot. So let me be very clear. Um, I am a senior director of student affairs at a large research one institution in the Northeast. I um, have been at this institution for a little over five years. I love my job. I love working in industry. Industry. Um, I have a PhD in educational leadership. Um, and so the role that I have is really aligned with my skill sets. And I love my job. I love working. Um, I have no intentions to quit. You know, people are always like, are you ever going to quit your job? No, I'm probably not. Like, I love working. Um, I, I'm very proud to say that I run a very, um, you know, successful business um, in mentoring women. And I also, you know, have a very successful career. I have no plans of like dropping one or the other. Very happy in both. Um, and I don't juggle. I I have lots of help. I have lots of support. Um, at, at work, I have a staff. I supervise a staff of eight people. Um, I hire very capable, very knowledgeable, you know, very smart people. Um, I hire them to do their job and they do it. And my job is to supervise them, to coach them, to train them, to support them, but not to do their job for them or not to micromanage them. So I, I save a lot of time at work not micromanaging my staff. <laughs> So that saves me a lot of time hiring good people, not micromanaging them. That saves a lot of time. And then in my business, I have a staff. I have a team. So I have an admin. I have an executive assistant. Um, I have a graphic designer. I have a copy editor. You know, um, on retainer, I have a lawyer. I have a bookkeeper. I have a tax accountant. Right. So I have a team of people. So I think whenever you see like, like, you know, boss women or women who feel like they're doing their thing and you're like, um, you know, how does she do it all? Like, ask her who who is helping you, you know, like avoid asking women, how do you do it all? Because rarely are women doing it all. Often women have a lot of help. So I have a lot of help and I'm, I'm never shy about that. And I want people to know that I have a lot of help because I want it to free you from thinking you have to do everything by yourself. So often high achieving professional women, particularly black women, feel like we got to do it all. We got to do everything. Got to be everything to everybody. We got to help everybody. We got to do everything. I have released myself from that. I invite you to do the same. I don't have to do everything. I don't have to be everywhere. I don't have to help everybody. I, I, I do what I'm good at. I'm doing what I'm in expert at and I let everything else kind of go right and so definitely want to invite you um definitely want to invite you to kind of release uh trying to do everything um so yeah that's what I would say to that um and like hire help and right and you don't have to be rich to hire help I was just talking oh I just love hiring help I love getting help I wish I like I like I always try to find somebody to do something for me even if I don't have a lot of money I'm like Oh, I wonder if like I can hire somebody to do this or that. So like, for example, um, I love to cook. I love to cook, you know, but I don't have time to like grocery shop and cook and like actually make a nice meal. So I got HelloFresh. It's like $80. And like I, if the meals come to me, they give me a recipe card. I can cook it. It's wonderful. Like, you know, it's not that expensive. Like hire help. I know two black women who have au pairs I think that's what they're called I had never even heard of this concept before but they have women from other countries living in their house helping to raise their kids I mean I've heard of like nannies before even like I was a nanny in grad school but like nannies typically don't live with you but these women like live with them I'm like oh my god like I don't even have no kids and I don't plan to but I'm like can I have an au pair for me can I have somebody live in my house and just like help me with stuff like this is amazing so yeah just hire some help start you can start small you don't have to like do a lot but Hire some help. Do not stay stuck, you know, because you don't know what, like, you don't know what to do or you don't know how to do it. Hire some help. Um, hi, Victoria. Oh, hey, Victoria. Yeah, uh, Liz. Liz Simpson is who I work with. Um, so good to see you. Thanks for coming to my live. I appreciate you. Um, let's see if there are other questions here. Yeah, let me know what other questions you guys have. Happy to answer questions. You can type them in the comment section. You can also put them in the little question bubble and I will answer them there. If you want to be anonymous, you should put them in the little question bubble because that way your name won't come up. If you just don't care who, who knows what you ask, you can just put it in the chat. <laughs> um, all right. So I got a question that says, do you recommend negotiating salary when the offer is fair value? Do you uh, do entry level professionals uh, have much leverage? Um, so you always negotiate, you always negotiate. You should always be negotiating. Um, yeah, always negotiate. I don't care what they offer you. If somebody offered me a million dollars to do anything right now, I would be like, um, you know, what I was really looking for is a million five, right? Like we always negotiate. 
Um, yeah, and there's actually um, a negotiation script on my feed. So if you kind of scroll, like I posted in the last month. So sometime between April 1st and right now, if you scroll on my Instagram feed, you'll see the exact negotiation script that I teach my mentees in my program. Um, and yeah, you always negotiate because it's not about fair value. It's about how much you desire to be paid at this stage in your career. Um, so I actually just was helping a mentee with this today. She just got an interview, my mentee, Quinesha, and she was like, hey, Ashley, like I have a question. Like, you know, I, I, you know, I'm excited about this job. I'm excited to do this role, but I'm not sure how much I should ask for for this position. And of course, I teach my mentees in the Mentor Me Accelerator how to you know, identify high paying roles, how to position themselves as a top candidate for those roles and how to make sure that, you know, um, they're only applying for roles that are going to pay them well for their expertise. But sometimes still they're like, I'm not sure how much to ask for. And my, my answer is how much you want to be paid. It literally does not matter. Like, you know, what the fair market value is. It's about because like fair market value might not have nothing to do with your bills, right? Your bills might not be fair market value. <laughs> so you need to ask for what you want. Right. You need to ask for what you want. So, you know, I always encourage my mentees to ask for what they want. How much are how much do you, my question is, how much do you desire to be paid to do this kind of work at this stage in your career? If you desire to be paid eighty thousand dollars then you need to say, I desire to be paid eighty thousand dollars. Now, if the job is only offering sixty three, then you can decide if you want it or not. But like, don't I don't want you to be like, well, I don't know if, if this is fair. It's not about fairness. It's about how much you desire to be paid and how well you can articulate your skill set. So the employer will pay you at the level you desire to be paid. Um, my little sister, shout out to my little sister, Amber. She is a nurse. She works in healthcare. She's a travel nurse. And what's great about the travel nurse industry is that you can name your price, baby. Like you tell these people, no, I'm looking to be paid $80 million this year. And like somebody will pay it to you. I mean, she works in a very high demand industry, but like, you know, I, I'm inviting more women to approach their career. Like travel nurses approach theirs. How much do I want to be paid in this season of my life? <laughs> Approaching it like that. That's that's my feedback for that. That's my expert feedback for that. You always negotiate. And you said, do entry level professionals have much leverage? Absolutely. Like if you like you you always have leverage because they're they're they that you always have the leverage. The leverage always sits with you. Why? Because they the one who got a job posted. They the one who got a, a, a vacancy in the organization. They the one who needs you. This isn't about like, every, of course you have leverage. This is a job seekers market. These employers are looking for somebody to take these jobs. Unemployment is at record lows. They look, they hope you will take the job. And they are willing to pay top dollar for your expertise. So it's not about entry level or mid level or senior level. It's about your ability to articulate your skill set so the employer is excited to pay you well for your expertise. And that's what I teach my mentees to do in the Mentor Me Accelerator. I help them regardless of how many years of experience they have, regardless of how many degrees they do or don't have, regardless of what credentials they do or don't have. I help my mentees position themselves as top candidates. An industry, and I definitely encourage you um, if you know you need some support with that to um, join the Mentor Me Accelerator program. Um, the link is in my bio, but I'll also go ahead and type it here. Um, it's mentor me.org. I'm accepting new mentees right now. Um, so definitely invite you to join if you feel like you need support with that. And let me know if that was helpful to you. Let me know if that, that answer was helpful to you. Great question. Thanks for asking it. Um, okay, so next up is um, Crumb Cake 26 said, what's a good way to ask your boss for a raise? And hi, everybody who's joining. Welcome, welcome. So glad to see you here. So yes, this is a very common question um, that I get from women. And the best way, there's a framework for this, right? So um, grab your pencil, Crumb uh, Cake, grab your pencil. I'm going to walk you through a framework. So um, the way you ask your boss for a raise is that you want to um, reflect first on your own value and the work that you've been doing within the organization over the last, let's just say six months, right? So you want to reflect on the work that you've been doing over the last six months and how that work is directly connected to the goals, vision, values, and um, desired outcomes of the company, of the organization, of the institution, whatever, wherever you work, right? So what have I been doing over the last six months that is directly connected 
to the mission, vision, values, purpose, and desired outcomes of this organization. You want to document that. You can just write it on a piece of paper. You can type it up in an email. You know, you just want to have a documentation of the work that you've been doing and how it's directly tied to the um, outcomes of the organization. Um, and then you want to sort of like think about like the landscape of your organization. So in higher education and in, in most organizations, there's like a mid-year review and an annual review. Um, you can, let me be very clear. You can ask for a raise at any time, right? You can literally ask for a raise at any time. Um, but if you have a mid-year or an annual review coming up, go ahead and use that time. That's a great time to ask. But you can literally ask at any time. If your organization doesn't have like a performance cycle like that, then it's fine. You can just, again, you can ask at any time. So you want to directly outline that. And then you want to make the ask. So you would go to your boss. You would go to your supervisor. Um, and um, you want to like do this in a meeting. So you want to request a meeting. So my recommendation is to send an email that says something like, hey, uh, Malisha, um, I'd like to meet with you um, over the next two weeks for 30 minutes to talk to you about um, the outcomes um, that I've been driving in this organization over the last six months uh, and an improved performance package to more better align with my skill set, right? So you want to send your boss, Malisha, an email to let her know girl I'm coming for a bag um then um two days before the meeting you send Malisha this outline of the work that you've been doing over the last six months that's directly connected to the mission vision values and outcomes desired outcomes of the organization now let me be very clear hear me when I say this a lot of times at work, we be just be doing the most. We be out at work just doing the most, doing everything, or we be doing the least. Some of y'all doing the least. You know, this is not for you. This is for the girls who are doing the most. So you would be at work doing the most, and then you'd be mad, resentful, angry, frustrated, annoyed when you don't get a raise, a promotion, or whatever. But then nobody asks you to do all of that. Or you're doing a lot of busy work that's not directly tied to the mission, vision, valued, and desired outcomes of the organization. So again, the only way that you're going to get a raise is that you need to be able to clearly, confidently, and concisely speak to the problem that you're solving, right? The problem that your skill set, your work there solves. If you ain't solving no problems, you ain't getting paid. Solving problems, getting paid. Boom. Not solving problems, at work wasting time, at work doing mostly nothing, at work doing a lot of things but don't have anything to do with the problem, not getting paid. Everybody clear on that? Throw some hearts up on the screen if you're clear on that. So you need to be actually doing something that's actually directly tied to what the, the, the organization is looking for. So, But if we're doing that, then two days before... Um, the meeting, we send Malisha an email and, and we say, you know, Malisha, ahead of um, looking forward to our meeting. Um, so today's what? Wednesday. So looking forward to our meeting on Friday. Um, ahead of the meeting, I wanted to just outline the work that I've been doing um, that's directly tied to the mission, vision, values, uh, and desired outcomes of our organization that um, speak to my expertise and how this work is a, uh, would be better aligned with an improved compensation package. Then when we get in the meeting, right, because we've already done the pre-work. We already let them know we're coming for a bag. We already let them know why we're coming for the bag. Then when we get to the meeting, it's simply, um, um, so thanks so much for taking the time to meet with me today. Did you have the opportunity to review the things that I outlined? Um, how can we improve my performance package to make sure it's outlined with the um, outstanding work I've been doing over the course of my career? Boom, boom, boom. Let me know if that answers your question, Crumb Cake. Um, 26 and thanks for asking it. It's a very common question and there's so many women who are constantly being underpaid um, And so I really want to help more women make more money and have more impact. Obviously, that's what I do as a mentor um, Actually, one of my mentees. Um, I think I just celebrated her She just secured a $20,000 salary increase a $20,000 raise in her current organization. Um, her name's Carmela You can see her testimony on my feed um, so that's like the quick and dirty of it. But if you want more intensive support on that, you should join the accelerator. The link is uh, pinned here and it's also in my bio. Um, but yeah, that, let me know if that was helpful. All righty. So, um, next up is hugs and hustle. She said, what is the biggest support element in staying organized and energy regulated day to day from doing your career then into your business? Ooh, good question. So I'll be honest that, um, like my, my life doesn't work like that. It's not like, oh, I'm doing, I'm working right now. And oh, I'm doing my business right now. My life is a lot more integrated. So I don't have like set work hours and set 
like business hours. I, my life is a lot more integrated. Um, and this is because like my full-time work in industry. So my full-time work in higher education, you know, I'm meeting with students in the evenings. I'm meeting with students on the weekend. So just to keep like, you know, a straight like eight to five just wouldn't work. Plus I have students, I serve students all over the world, right? So I have students literally all over the world. I primarily serve online students. So yeah, just keeping some standard work hours would not work for my career. So my, my, my full-time work in industry is very flexible. You know, as a entrepreneur and as a CEO of, my, of a business, my work, it also has to be flexible, right? Like I, I meet with my mentees, um, you know, throughout the week, um, in the evenings during the week, I sometimes answering questions for mentees on the weekends. Like when my mentees, you know, get a job offer or have to negotiate an offer, like I need to be quick to like answer their questions to support them. Um, so it, it's not like, oh, I work all day and then I do my business in, at night or, you know, I work, you know, I do my business in the morning and then I go to work. Like it's, it's a lot more integrated, but I would say the biggest support element who the biggest support element is boundaries. So I am very, I am very regimented. Like I'm a very rigid person. Like I'm the type of person like I, I'm like what I'm good at, I'm good at. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. I'm a trainer. I develop women. Like, you know, my mentees have earned more than a million dollars in salary increases, raises, and promotions because of how good I am at what I do. And I don't do anything that I'm not good at. Right. So I am not a very detail oriented person. Right. I'm just not. I'm not a detail oriented person. I'm not really into a lot of details. If it's got if, if I got to do a lot of like, blah, 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 I'm not it's not going to be done well. So I hire people on my team in my business and in my in, at, in my staff at work to, that are very detail oriented because I'm not a detail oriented person. And if it, you need it to be detail oriented, it ain't going to never be done by Ashley. So, like, I think I know what I'm good at and I stick to what I'm good at. And I even encourage women to do that, like in their career. Like a lot of times we'd be like, let me find my passion and purpose. You know, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. So I believe that you were born with, like you were born with gifts. You were born with skill sets. You were born with things that you already good at. And instead of trying to find your passion and find your purpose, what I invite you to do is just to lean into the things that you are already good at, good at and have those things make more money and have more impact in the world for you. Right. I'm a visionary. I'm a big picture thinker. I'm a great at like taking an idea, developing a framework, putting it in a concept, helping somebody move forward in their life. Right. And so I took that and I built a very successful business from it. Right. I've helped hundreds of women with it. Right. But like if I was like trying to find my passion, like I might be out here roller skating or something. And that might not be, you know, what I'm saying, like might not be what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't know. I just. You know, and, and if you don't know what you're good at or if you feel like I'm good at a lot of things or if you feel like I know what I'm good at, but I don't know how to use it. That's a sign that you need mentorship. <laughs> and I'm accepting new mentees right now. in The accelerator program link is below for you to join. Uh, but that's a sign you need mentorship and I can help you with that. Um, and then energy regulation. Yeah. Um, that's something that I'm, I need to like. That's something that I'm getting better at. Um, but something I always have to like check in with myself. Cause some stuff will drain you, right? And, and or some stuff will energize you. You be on a high, but then like you on a low later. So I really do. It's it's challenging for me. I have to really work at that. Um, but I think that the primary thing that I that I do is like I, I guess I try never to get too high or too low, if that makes sense. And I know that sometimes that might feel like dang, so you don't never experience joy. But I just try not to like. I try not to be ruled by my emotions. I, I you know what I'm saying like I try to be like balance even keel not take myself too seriously not take other people too seriously not let don't let nobody like press me you know what i'm saying like i try to keep an even keel um and never get too down in the dumps or never get like oh i'm on an emotional high i don't want my life or my emotions to be a roller coaster i don't want to be controlled so i just try to like regulate it like that let me know if that was helpful to you such a good question such a good question y'all asking so many dope questions thank you um, uh, Crumb Cake said, I have heard that men don't hesitate when asking for an increase. I think that that's not true. Like, actually, what, I, what I've seen in the data is that women ask for raises just as much as men do. Women just aren't respected in the workforce. Like, I think, like, that, 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 that what you just shared is old data. And this is why it's important to have a career coach who's versed 
in contemporary career strategy because they will have you believe in something that was true but only in 1989 that's not true anymore women are asking for money they're just not being given it at the same rate as men because of sexism <laughs> but women are asking i think what's true is that women are often when women ask for more money, they're like, they, they make it circumstantial. And I think that's the thing that women need not to do. When women ask for money, they're like, well, I need more money because daycare costs are rising. The price of gas is rising and I need more money. That is not how you ask for money. You ask for money based on what your skill set. You ask for money based on the outcomes that you're driving for the organization. You ask for money based on the problems that you're solving. You don't ask for money based on your personal circumstance. Women are asking. They're just not asking the right way. But that's what I'm here for to help you with that. Um, Liddy millennial recruiter said, what if you got the raise, but the employer gave you the number? Should I accept or go back and ask for more? You, so like you ask for a raise, they, they give you what you, I guess I'm confused. What if you got the raise, but the employer gave you the number? So they just offered you a raise. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. So you like, you always negotiate how negotiation works is that they, they get, they offer you something you, you counter offer. And then they come back. So they offer, you counter, uh, they come back. So that's negotiation is a back and forth. It's not just a, a back. So if they, they offered you something, it doesn't mean you just accept it. You always negotiate. Like somebody type always negotiate in the chat just so we all on the same page. You always negotiate. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. I'm so glad that was helpful. Keep the questions coming. This has been so fun. Keep them coming. Um... Okay, next up is a question from Crumb Cake. She said, when I do a salary research, it's always less than the current salary to ask for an increase. Um, it's always less than my current salary. Oh, so that might mean one of two things. Um, thank you, Fope. Always negotiate, right? Always. It doesn't matter. Like, there's no caveat to that. You always negotiate. Um, so this probably means one of two things, Crumb Cake. Well, actually, just one thing. You're likely um, overqualified for the roles that you're applying to. If you are doing salary research and the salaries that you see, the salary research tells you that um, the, the, like you're, you're currently being overpaid in your current role, that means that you are mismatched. You're misaligned. You need to be applying for higher level roles. You need to be applying for higher level roles that are going to pay you well for your expertise. You're, 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 you're currently applying for roles that are too low for your skill set, which is why you're seeing lower level salaries. You need to apply for higher level roles. And if you need help with that, um, you know where to go. <laughs> um, all right. Next is from Tiffany. Tiffany said, what do you suggest, especially to your clients who have salary, who have had salary increases to continue to stand out in their companies and make and make impact? Yes, that's such a good question. So I have a program called the Mentor Me Mastermind. Um, the Mentor Me, Mentor Me Mastermind is an executive coaching experience for um, high performing women. Um, I typically only have like three or four women in the mastermind at any given time. It's very selective, very, you know, very selective, very kind of exclusive. Um, I don't really ever talk about it on the internet. Um, cause women come find me for it, um, typically, but it sounds like Tiffany, if that's where you are, the mastermind might be a good fit for you. Um, because when you are, you know, in a role, you've got that higher level role, you, you know, moving and shaking, um, in this higher level role, you, you know, maybe got the six figure salary, you got a twenty thirty thousand dollars salary increase. Um, and it's like, okay, now that I'm here, what do I do? <laughs> right. What well, you know, I'm here now. What do I do? The, the, in the mastermind, I teach my mentees how to, um, secure, uh, sort of, sort of have impact at the highest levels of leadership and sustain impact at the highest levels of leadership. Cause it's one thing to get a job, right? But it's enough, another thing to keep it <laughs> and to keep growing as a professional. And so that's what the mastermind teaches. It's like kind of a boardroom style program where I have the like highest top performing women across multiple different industries. And I teach those women how to um, really sustain their careers. There we talk a lot about managing up, right? How to manage from any level that you're at. We talk a lot about um, office politics, how to navigate and leverage office politics um, across the course of your career, 
Um, we talk a lot about race and identity, right? I serve a lot of women. I serve a lot of women of color. I serve a lot of black women. Our identity matters. It, it impacts the way that we show up in the world of work. It's important that we don't disregard our identity when we get to these higher level roles, that we stop being authentic, that we stop showing up for as who we are. Um, but it's also important that we learn how to leverage our identity to get what we want right and so i teach a lot of like identity politics um there's a session in the mastermind called what to do when um, they cry that talks about the relationship between black women and white women in the workplace and how that that relationship has, has been fraught over the course of history and how to navigate across uh, um racial relations in the world of work um i teach a lot about public identity so how to position yourself as a public entity right like I'm a public entity in my industry like I'm often sought after you know as a public you know entity uh for professional women who you know work in higher education um and I and I leverage that public persona to you know raise my public profile to get more opportunities at work those kinds of things so I teach that in the mastermind and those are the kind of competencies that you want to start to gain how to manage up how to navigate office politics how to use data to tell stories how to build a public profile those are the kinds of competencies you need to learn how to gain and those are competencies that I teach in my mastermind um, so if that sounds like a good fit for you you can go to my website click on the mastermind tab at the top um, I am accepting new mentees right now in that program and you can join today um, so the question is, hi, Ashley, how can I schedule a consultation with you? Yeah, you can do so right on my website. So just click the link um, that's pinned at the bottom. Or it's, I guess it's not a link, but type in the words that's pinned at the bottom. It's mentor-me.org. Type that into your web browser. You can also go to my bio. So if you click the little picture of me in the top uh, part of your screen um, and go to my bio, the link to my website, mentor-me.org is there. Um, click the button that says, let's get started and you'll get access to my calendar. Next up is Evan Flo. She said, I'm currently in a role that I'm really passionate about, but I'm not getting the support that I need from my supervisor. How should I address that? Ooh, such a good question. Thanks for answering, asking that. Um, so, um, first you need to outline what kind of support you need, right? So when you say I'm not getting the support that I need, the question, my immediate question is what kind of support do you need? So you want to take a piece of paper and outline, like take a blank piece of paper, literally and outline, this is the kind of support for I need, right? So like, maybe you're like, I don't have a big enough budget. I can't get anything done in this organization because I don't have a big enough budget. You want to write that like, you know, I need a, a larger budget. It may be, you know, I need your advocacy. Every time I come to you and tell you I want to do something, you're just like, oh, good luck. Or yeah, let me know if you need anything. But you're not advocating for me at higher levels. I'm, I'm not visible enough in this organization. I need your advocacy. I need your support. I need you to speak up for me and my unit or something like that. So like advocacy for you, maybe, um, you know, you're not getting enough one on one time with them. Right. Maybe you need more. You need more feedback from them. You need more input from them. So like feedback and support. Right. So you write that down. Um, and you want to have a conversation with them. I actually teach this strategy in both my Mentor Me Mastermind and my Mentor Me Accelerator. It's called Managing Up, and I teach women how to advocate for themselves with their managers, with their bosses, with their leaders. And so um, you want to go to, you want to email your boss. This is similar to sort of like that ask a raise kind of conversation. So you want to email and say, um, you know, hey, Kashira, um, I'd like to meet with you for um, 60 minutes between now and um, May 15th um, about um, the support that I'll need from you over the next 90 days to really be successful in my role. Let me know if I should work with your admin to schedule or what your availability is. So like you want to give them a very specific time, let them know a little bit about what the meeting is about um, and then request they schedule it. Two days of, um, ahead of the meeting, you want to send them an email that an email documenting the, the ways that you need support. Um, hey, Kashira, I think that's what I called her. I'm looking forward to our meeting um, on Friday. Um, in advance of the meeting, I wanted to outline the kind of support I know I'll need from you over the next 90 days. Particularly, I need this, this, and this. I look forward to discussing this with you more at our meeting on Friday. And then at the meeting on Friday, you reiterate what you've already said in the email. Um, so basically, how can, how can you best support me to get 
these needs met. And if they're like, I can't support you or girl, I know what you're talking about. Or, I ain't doing none of that. That's it make, means it's time for you to look for a job. That's a very clear sign. If they're like, oh yeah, absolutely happy to help you with that. Great. Then we can start to develop a plan on how they're going to help you and what the follow-up looks like. If they kind of hemming and hawing and I don't know that you guys can work on what you need and how they can meet those needs. Um, but that is the approach um, that I would recommend. If you have any other questions, let me know. And great question. Thanks for asking it. Such a good question. Oh, you said I need new staff onboarding. Yeah, so you want to outline what the staff positions are and why you need them, what the rationale is, um, and how these staff will solve an existing problem in the organization. So yeah, that's what you want. You want to ask how these, you want to answer the question of how these staff will solve an existing problem in the organization. Let me know if that was helpful to you. You guys are asking such good questions. I'd love to see it. Okay, question from Crom Cake. She said, what's a good way to transition to a different position you have no experience in? So you um, want to focus on skill articulation, Crumb Cake. I will, I've done a video on this. I've done a video on how to transition into a new industry, leveraging your existing skills. So I will DM you. I will DM you a link to that video and you can watch it. Um, uh, and I'll share it in my stories too. I'll share it in my stories. So for anybody else who has a similar question, you can read it from my stories, but I'll DM you specifically crumb cake. Um, but yeah, the, the, the primary way for you to transition from one industry to another is to leverage your existing skills to position you as an expert in the new industry. So what you said is like that you have no, in, no experience in, chances are you do have experiences. You just don't understand how your existing experiences translate into the other industry. But that's my job, right? My job as a mentor is to help women do that. That. Um, so if you feel like you need support in that, then I invite you to join the accelerator. Like I said, you can do so um, with the link here, the link in my bio. But the primary strategy um, is around what's called skill articulation or your ability to articulate or speak to the skills that you already have, your existing skills and how those can solve a problem in a new industry. If you come into the industry talking about, I don't know nothing about this, but I want a job over here. Everybody going to be like, what girl It's going to be crickets, right? Your job is to articulate how your existing skills can be leveraged in this new organization, right? That's your job to do as a job seeker. Um, and, and my, my, what I do as a mentor is to help you do just that literally in session one of the mentor me accelerator, I teach women how to leverage their existing skills in new industries. And we go through a series of assessments to really help pull that out of you so that you already know very clearly, boom, 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 boom. I have these skills. These skills are matched in these industries. And now I can go uh, apply for jobs in these industries and get, you know, and get, um, you know, and be positioned as a top candidate. So that's, that's ex exactly what I do in session one of the mentor me accelerator. But I do have a video that kind of walks through my framework from the accelerator and I will DM that to you. Um, I think I asked, answered this one already. Uh, Sasha um, said, hi, how do I schedule a consultation with you? You can do so right on my website. I'll put the link here. It's mentor-me.org. I'm accepting new mentees right now. So you can go ahead and schedule a call with me. Um, if you think I would be a good fit for you, if, you're, if you know you're looking for a mentor, you need help in your career. Um, if you think I'd be a good fit, go ahead and just go to my website and schedule a call with me and do that. Um, and I think I've answered all the questions. I think I've answered everything that's here. Um, so thanks for coming to today's uh, live. This was so much fun. I, I think now that I know what kind of questions y'all ask, we can do this more often. Um, so feel free to comment. I'm going to post this to my feed. If it was helpful to you, if you learned something, um, if it was supportive to you, please, please, please do two things for me. Number one, um, comment, say, Ashley, this was super helpful. This was such a good live. And then share it. I answered a ton of questions here. I think a lot of other people will have these questions as well. So please answer, please share this live. Do not be selfish. Ebb and flow. Do not be selfish. Share this live. Say, hey, Ashley went live today. She answered questions for me. It was super helpful. Please share the live once I post it to the feed. I'm going to do so right now so that other women can benefit from my expertise. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.